Hello everyone, welcome to the video lecture on NIPER 2020 paper. In this video, I am going to explain in NIPER 2020 how many questions have come from each subject. That is what is about subject wise paper analysis. And then I will discuss some of the pharmacology strategies for NIPER. This is my channel. You just type in my name in YouTube as G. Sai Rajesh, you will get my channel. I have 124 pharma related videos and 1950 subscribers. Let's begin the class. Now, subject wise number of questions in NIPA 2020, the first one is chemistry. See when I say chemistry, it includes analytical chemistry, pharmaceutical analysis, organic chemistry and medicinal chemistry. Totally put together, there are 51 questions are there. In case of pharmacology, there are around 46 questions are there. From pharmaceutics, 33 questions are given and from biochemistry, 22 questions are given, which is a quite uh, high in number. Pharmacognosy and forensics put together, 8 questions are given. And uh, the general ap aptitude, this is called as aptitude, which includes current affairs as well as mental ability, has got 40 questions are there. So totally there are 200 questions are there. Now see, these are all the major things like chemistry 51 which are very high in number, pharmacology 46, pharmaceutics 33, biochemistry 2, 22 and current affairs and mental ability 40. So this is the analysis for NIPER 2020 question paper. Now let us look some of the strategies for pharmacology. See, in order to succeed in any competitive exam you need a particular strategy. What is the strategy? You need to identify what kind of questions are being asked in that particular competitive exam. In this case, NIPER. You need to analyze the previous NIPER paper to know what kind of questions are being asked. Then you need to plan your preparation accordingly. So accordingly you need to plan your preparation so that you will do well in the examination. Now once you plan and prepare, you need to execute what all the strategies you have followed. You have to execute during the examination and that finally results in success. So this is what I believe and you all need to follow a particular strategy. Let us see how it works. Now, first strategy, see pharmacology, medicinal chemistry, both of them concept wise very similar. Only difference is in medicinal chemistry, you will be reading about SAR, synthesis and structures in detail. Leaving that mechanism of action, all the things are very similar. So I would suggest whenever you read pharmacology, include medchem also because there are certain questions called as combo questions. You see pharmacology part as well as medicinal chemistry part, <coughs> excuse me. So whenever you take up the topic, please pay attention and read them together. You don't need to separate it. Let us see the questions then you will understand. See, which of the following peptides is cyclic in nature? Options are glutathione, gramicidine, metenkephalin, dynorphin. All of them are peptides. But what is the difference? Glutathione is a tripeptide. See the reason it is made up of linear 3 amino acids. Glue indicates it has got glutamate. Thia means it has got a sulfur containing amino acid that is cysteine and then glycine. So it is made up of 3 amino acids. Glutamate, glycine and cysteine. And it is linear in nature, but the question is about cyclic in nature. No, so this is not correct. Gramicidine, in fact, gramicidine S is a decapeptide, 10 amino acid containing cyclic peptide. This is, in fact, an antibiotic which acts effectively against gram positive and as well as gram negative one. Now, enkephalin, dynorphin, both of them are opioid peptides. They will be acting on opioid receptors. Metenkephalin has got 5 amino acids. Again, they are linear one. Linear means straight one. Dynorphin has got 32 amino acids. Again, this is also a linear amino acid one. So the question is particularly asking about cyclic peptide. The answer is gramicidine. I'll show you the structure. So this is what is gramicidine as structure. It is a cyclic decapeptide. You know, all these are amino acids. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Decapeptide. And as I told you, it is effective against gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria. And it will be acting the lipid membranes of bacteria. So this is an antibiotic, which is, a, which structurally it has got cyclic decapeptide. One. Now see this. See, uh, the moment you see gramicidine, this is an antibiotic. When you learn mechanism of action and everything, it becomes a pharmacology part. But the question is asked about chemistry one. So these type of questions are called as combo questions. 
So usually the, the overlap occurs. So whenever you read pharmacology, don't separate medicinal chemistry. The same thing with medicinal chemistry. When you learn structure and SCR, you go in detail about adverse effects, mechanism of action, we will be covering pharmacology too. We will see one more example. See, alogliptin, saxagliptin, vildagliptin have common structural feature and that is responsible and that is responsible for the reaction with DPP-4. What is it? See, all these drugs are oral hypoglycemic drugs. Hypoglycemic agents are the agents which are used to reduce diabetes mellitus. Hypo means reducing. Glyce means glucose. Emia means blood. So, in the blood, glucose reducing agents are known as hypoglycemic agents. What is DPP? Dipeptidyl peptidase. Pep Dipeptidyl peptidase. This is an enzyme. This is being inhibited by these three drugs. Now, the question asks, there is a common structural feature is there and that is responsible for inhibiting this enzyme. So, you need to know the mechanism of action and you need to know that common feature. Usually, in medicinal chemistry wise, certain groups or groups of atoms which are responsible for its mechanism of action are known as pharmacophore, pharmacophores. Now, in this case, you need to identify that particular functional group which is responsible for its action. Now, understand this. The question is about all the three drugs should contain that common structural feature. Now, what is that? Now, options are given as nitrile group. Nitrile is nothing but cyano group. Beta amino acid. Let us understand uh, this thing. See, uh, the amino acids which we read are these things. Are the common structure is RCH and H2COOH. This is a functional group. The adjacent functional group is known as alpha carbon. So, to this amine is attached. So, all naturally occurring amino acids are alpha amino acids. But the but here it is beta amino acid. That means one more carbon is there like this. Adjacent carbon is alpha. This one is beta. To this amine group is attached. Then it is called as beta amino acid. The next one is adamantine ring. And last one is pyrrolidine. Now, you need to identify which is the common structural feature. Understand the drug. See, vildagliptin, saxagliptin, allogliptin. Look at this. What is common here? This is a nitrile group. What is present here? This is a nitrile group. What is present here? A nitrile group. So, all the three contains a nitrile group. In fact, this nitrile group combines with dipeptidyl peptidase 4. In this dipeptidyl peptidase 4, there is a catalytic serine moiety is there to which it forms a bond and inhibit the function of this enzyme. But see, the answer is this one. <coughs> but understand this one, adamantine ring. If you see the structures, this is adamantine ring. This is adamantine ring. So, vildagliptin, saxagliptin to have adamantine ring. But the question is also asking about allogliptin. It has to be, the, the group has to be present in all the three drugs. But allogliptin do not have adamantine ring. So, this is not Adamantine, you cannot choose it. <coughs> Next one, look at this, pyrrolidine. See again, what is this pyrrolidine ring? Again, what is this pyrrolidine ring? But in allogliptin, no pyrrolidine ring is there. You need to pay attention to these drugs. All the three should have the common feature. So, pyrrolidine is present in two of the drugs. Adamantine ring is present in two of the drugs. But the question is about all the three should contain. So, the answer is nitrile group. I can see this is a combo question which includes ecology as well as medicinal chemistry one. Let us see about dipeptidyl peptidases. What are they? They are commonly known as gliptins. When you take glucose uh, carbohydrates which releases glucose, in the small intestine the released glucose re releases incretins. One of the examples for incretin is glucagon like peptide. Now the job of incretin is it will increase the levels of insulin release and reduces glucagon release. What happens when insulin is released? Plasma glucose is reduced. What happens when glucagon is reduced? That again reduces plasma glucose. What is the main problem in diabetes mellitus? Hyperglycemia. Hyper means excess, glyce means glucose, emia means blood. So in the blood, glucose levels are more. When insulin is released, glucose levels reduces. When glucagon is reduced, again glucose levels are reduced. So this is how these drugs act as Hypoglycemic agent. See, incretin will 
reduce this hyperglycemic effect how by increasing insulin and reducing glucagon now this incretin is metabolized by dipeptide l peptidase 4 now all these gliptins will inhibit this enzyme if the enzyme is inhibited what happens incretin level incretin levels increases if insulin level is increased insulin release increases and you will be treating hyperglycemia so this is what is the concept is Moving to the next type, <clears throat> next one. See, which of the following is not a class of calcium channel blockers? So, calcium channel blockers, see, the difference between pharmacology and medicinal chemistry is, in pharmacology, we read classification based on mechanisms. Whereas, in medicinal chemistry, we read classifications based on structures, chemical structures. So, learning both of them is always useful. You, you learn pharmacology classification, you will know what is the mechanism of action. You learn structure based medicinal chemistry classification, you will know the structures. Now, the question is about this one. See, all the structures are given aryloxyethanol amine, phenylalkyl amines, dihydropyridines, benzothiazepines. See, the question is which of the following is not a class? See, phenylalkyl amine, verapamil, dihydropyridines, all depends, nifedipine, felodipine, all of them. Ben benzothiazepine, diltiazem, all the three are calcium channel blockers. What is the odd man? Aryloxyethanolamine. In fact, aryloxyethanolamine is a structure motif for beta blockers like propylenolol, pindolol, timolol, all of them. So, the answer is this one. So, look at this. So, three important class of calcium channel blockers, virapamil, a phenylalkylamine which has got a hydrophilic group. Nifedipine, all depends, a dihydrophilidine, lipophilic. Diltiazem, again it is a hydrophilic one, but benzothiazepine. Again, structure and pharmacology based. Moving to the next one. Now, see, the dihydropyridines block which of the following type calcium channel. Now, see, again, the question is not about nifedipine is blocking or felodipine is blocking. The question is based on chemistry. See, they are asking this chemistry, but again, blocking means they are asking about mechanism. So, they have given a structure and you need to identify what is the mechanism of action. Again, a combination of medicinal chemistry and pharmacology. L-type, T-type, N-type, ligand gated channels. All calcium channel blockers will block L-type voltage gated calcium channels. Look at this. The reason why they are called as L-type is long lasting. Now, L-type is sensitive to dihydropyridines. It is present in all these tissues, but the important one is L type is only sensitive to DHP. You have other types are there. N type means neural, P type means Purkinje fiber, R is residual, T type means transient. They are all non DHP sensitive. So they are not sensitive to dihydropyridine. So they will not get affected. Only affected calcium channel is L type. This is what is the question is. Right? Now moving to the next one. The final one in this category, haloperidol belongs to. See the options. They have given two things. One, a structure is given class is given. Structure is given, class is given. Structure is given, class is given. You need to identify this. This is a little bit easier one. Haloperidol is a butyrophenone antipsychotic. So, you need to know the other drugs too. Quinoline antipsychotic is aripiprazole. Aripiprazole is also an antipsychotic but the structure wise it has got quinoline derivative. Ajaspirodecandione like buspirone. Buspirones can act as anti-anxiety as well as anti-depressant drug. So, this kind of questions in order to answer that, please do not read separately medicinal chemistry and pharmacology, read it in combination. Now, the next one, scientific literacy or I would say terms, technical terms, words, learning all these terms is very important, especially in pharma field and medicine field, you need to understand the words that will give, that will help you a lot in competitive examination. Let us see how, now see this, acute decrease in response to a drug after initial or repeated intake is known as which of the following. You know, there are two different terms are there. Tolerance means reduced response of a drug when it is repeatedly taken. Another one is tachyphylaxis. Tolerance develops over the period of time, over a period of time. That means if you take continuously for one month or something like that, you will develop tolerance, especially sleeping pills. Sleeping pills, when elderly people, when they do take every day, after few after some months they will develop resistance that means the dose is not enough they need to increase the dose this is something different acute decrease of response means in very short doses in short time you develop tolerance that is what is tachy tachy means rapid you know uh, tachycardia means rapid heartbeat 
uh, example nitroglycerin nitroglycerin is a very good drug to treat angina pectoris but it when it is taken repeatedly it immediately develops tachyphylaxis even the nicotine opioids all of them has got this ability so again see the question is based on only this term if you understand this term you can easily score well in examinations we'll see few more things autophagy what is true about autophagy auto means self phagy means to eat phagocyte means that will eat microorganisms now see it can be considered a cell survival pathway as well as cell death pathway this is true now what happens in autophagy is when an organelle is damaged when it is beyond repair cell will release certain chemical mediators like glycosines lysozymes and kill that organelle by killing that organelle sometimes you will save that cell hence it is known as cell survival pathway sometimes when the cell is beyond damage autophagy may also kill the cell also so it is it is considered as cell survival pathway as well as cell death pathway let us see a little bit in detail see this is how it happens let's say there is a defective mitochondria is there mitochondria is not working properly and it is beyond repair so a membrane surrounds this mitochondria and forms this autophagosome and it attracts a lysosome lysosome releases its contents which will digest the entire thing so degradation occurs this is how an ar damaged organelle can be completely removed if if this is not removed this may kill the cell hence it is known as cell survival pathway and sometimes the same autophagy can also kill the cell hence it is also known as cell death pathway now moving to the next one the term that describes spreading of cancer See, I have made a video on cancer wherein you have all the terms are explained, but let me explain here. Malignancy, there are two types of tumors are there, malignant and benign. Malignant tu uh, tumors are cancerous tumors, benign or not dangerous tumors. So this is not. Invasiveness means when cancer tumor grows, it attacks the adjacent cells, it is known as invasiveness. This is not talking about spreading of cancer, no. Metastasis means spreading of cancer. When cancer cells will continue to multiply, after some time a particular piece breaks away and wherever it goes again it develops a new kind of cancer. So this is how cancer spreads and that is known as metastasis. Again neoplasia denotes cancer itself. Neo means new, plasia means cell growth. Again it is talking about cancer. To give you pure picture, see this is how a tumor develops. The tumor multiplies and gives a tumor mass and after some time it break, it leaves certain portions and that is what spreads to other tissues. See the initial tumor is here. It grows and once it grows it releases certain tumors and it grows it, it goes to other organs and this is how it spreads. Invasion is different. See when a cell has got a mutation it the number of cells will increase. Dysplasia means abnormal number of cells and a cancer develops. When it develops it breaks this basement tissue and attacks the adjacent tissue and this is what is called as invasion. So all these questions are based on particular terms or words. So you need to master the terms or words. In this video, I have explained these two strategies. In later videos, we'll see the remaining strategies. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, do subscribe.